Okay, in this um, presentation, I'm going to show you <clears throat> how to do some descriptive statistics uh, on SPSS. And here we have the data set that I showed you guys how to set up. I've just added two additional variables here for what we're going to do. One of the variables is the change, so the change in the score between the pretest and the post test. And then the other variable is the change group. So because I want to be able to display these, um, this data in tables, um, it'll make more sense and work better um, if you um, put them into groups. So if you put them into a nominal variable of groups. So we've assigned these to um, high, low, or no change groups where um, high change groups or excuse me no change groups are groups that you can see here i have it, it defined here no change groups are groups that either had a negative change or up to a score of nine for the change low had be between 10 and 24 and then high was between 25 and 40. so we'll get out of that so that's how how that was so high is three low is two and no change is one um, so let's take a look at doing some descriptive statistics. So if you go up to the toolbar at the top and you click on, um, oh wait, let me make sure we're on SPSS here. So here we go, we're on SPSS. So I'm gonna click on Analyze, and then I'm gonna come down here to Descriptive Statistics. And we're gonna start by looking at frequencies. All right, so now we have to make some choices. So I'm just gonna, I was uh, looking at this before, so I'm just gonna move these variables back over um, to start with, okay. So I need to decide what kind of variables do I want to look at the statistics for. So for example, we're, so we're going to start by just putting all of them over there and see what we kind of get. So if I hold down the command key and click, I can highlight all of them and then click the little arrow <clears throat> to move them over into the variable box. And then let's take a look at the kind of statistics we can run here. So um, we could look at percentile values where we could see you know, we could separate them into quartiles, so like who was in the bottom quarter, who was in the second quarter, et cetera. We're not going to do that now, though. We can look at the central tendencies of the scores. Um, so uh, for things like age or the handwriting scores or the change scores, mean is appropriate. Um, for the change group and the um, grade, mean isn't going to be as appropriate. So we could separate the variables out and look at a more appropriate measure of central tendency for grade, for example. Probably mode would be uh, important to know what was the most commonly happening one. Although I think our groups are pretty evenly divided, so it doesn't really matter. Um, or for example, the change group, we might want to know, uh, again, what's the, the mode, what's the most common one, or the median, what's the one kind of at the center, um, which is more uh, appropriate as a measure of central tendency than mean is among variables that are um, nominal or ordinal, such as grade level or change group. So we're going to go, just going to go with mean here. We can also look at things like what the standard deviation is, what the variance, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me, what the standard deviation is, which is, um, you know, how much do the scores vary around what the mean is, how, how much difference is there, is there large amounts of variation, and the variance is what is the variation of the scores, what's the minimum and maximum score, we could look at that. Um, we could also look at the distribution that the scores form to see if the distribution is a normal distribution. Um, in order to determine that, we might want to look at the skewness and the kurtosis of the distribution, but we're not going to look at that right now. So we're just going to look at uh, the mean and the measure of central tendency and some of the dispersion scores. So I'm going to hit continue. And then um, we could form some uh, charts, so it might be interested interesting to look at some different charts so we have to kind of ask ourselves what kind of charts do we want um, how would they be best viewed and sometimes it just takes kind of looking at them to see how well that works out for us so um, well let's try some bar charts and see what those look like and we can also choose to base it on frequencies or percentages we'll leave it at frequencies for now 
Um, and then format and style, this is just how you can arrange what you're going to see. We're just going to leave that as it is. Style uh, is a much more complex thing where you can look at changing how you want uh, the style of the things to appear. We're not going to worry about that. And so now we're ready to calculate and we're just going to click OK. It'll take a few seconds and it'll tell you, see here it says it's running. Okay, so here we go. Let me move this over a little so you can see it all and open it up a little bit more. There we go. <clears throat> all right, so the first table we're seeing here um, is telling us generally what the scores are. Um, so we, oh, obviously there's a problem with my age variable here because see how it says there's 20 missing. I must have something set wrong. We'll look at that in a second. Um, um, but we can see for grade, um, the mean, which doesn't really mean a lot for grade, right, is um, 1.95, which is about second grade, which doesn't make a lot of sense for that to be looked at with mean. So we'll just kind of ignore that for the moment. Um, for, but for the handwriting scores, we can see that the pretest handwriting score is 54.65 with a standard deviation of 20.989. So that's a pretty fair amount of variation there. So you can see there, there's a, a pretty large amount of variation, 440. Um, versus the post-test score, which has an average of 67.4 and a standard deviation of 16.436. So you can see there's um, less deviation, so that gives us a smaller variance of the scores. Uh, and then our change score, um, uh, the average change is 12.75, uh, which has a standard deviation of 14.037 and a variance of 197.039. I mean, then you see what the minimums and maximums are there as well. And then the group change as well. The mean doesn't mean as much here because it's a categorical variable, so these don't mean as much. Um, but we can see the minimum and maximum. This is really not very useful. These statistics here are not very useful at all when talking about nominal variables, as you can see, and even for ordinal variables like the mean or the standard deviation of grade is really kind of meaningless. Um, but we can look at the frequency tables, for example. So the frequency table for age doesn't really make a lot of sense because, well, first of all, there's a problem, so we need to look at that. But um, for grade, we can. this will tell us how many students, so seven of our 20 students are in the first grade. That makes up 35%. Um, seven of our students are in the second grade, that makes up 35%, and then six of our students are in the third grade, which makes up 30%. And then here we can see for the scores, you can see li listed on the left all the various scores that people scored on the pre-handwriting pre test, how often those scored scores happened. Again, this isn't very useful information here though. Same thing for the post-test scores, not terribly useful information, but you can see the frequencies of those scores. There's just a lot of numbers there, and so it's hard to say much about, about it. It's hard to kind of boil that down. So that's not a, a super helpful. Same thing with the change score. We have a lot of information there. However, when we look at the change group, here is where, because we've divided the change up into groups, this gets to be a little bit more of a bite size thing that we can look at and make some statements about. So we can see, for example, here, half of the kids, 50% of the kids, showed no change, right? 25% had a low level of change, and 25% had a high level of change. So that gives us some good information there. And now here's some of our charts. We can see here's a bar chart of the grade, what grades the kids are in. Here's a bar chart of the frequency of the handwriting scores, pre and post. And here's a, a bar chart of the frequency of the change. And then of the frequency of the change groups. This is probably the most useful of those bar graphs. So you can see that different, um, ways of presenting information uh, are helpful in different ways. Let's take a look at that again and look at, um, let's instead this time,
Let's look at age. Let's look at age and um, change group again. Oops, age, change group. Sorry about that. And see if, um, and we're going to let the same frequencies run. And, that, and let's see if um, a pie chart gives us some different information. So let's try that. And we can see here. Um, so here's the pie chart for our change group. We can see that's a good, uh, gives us some good information about, and a good uh, kind of pictorial representation of that. Now I forgot, we need to go back and look and see what's wrong with my age variable. So I'm going to go here to the variable view and look at age. And I don't know what's wrong with my age variable. Hmm, I do not know what's wrong with it. Let me look at that a second. Age. Yeah, I'm going to have to look at that a little bit more. Hmm. This is kind of weird. <clears throat> I'll have to go back and look at that at any rate. We're not going to worry about that right now. Um, the next thing we want to look at is another kind of descriptive statistic we can look at is cross tabs. So let's click on this. This will make little kind of comparison tables for us. So um, the best kind of data to go into these into cross tabs, these kind of tables are categorical data. So data that's at the ordinal or the nominal level. So we only have two normal, ordinal and nominal variables, so we'll pick them. We'll make the grades the rows, and the change group the columns, and then let's see how that looks. So here we can see that makes a table for us that shows us in first grade, there's four kids in the no change group, one in the low change group, and two in the high change group, and so on for second and third grade. So that gives us some useful information as well when we create a cross tab. All right, so that's just kind of a basic look at how we can um, look at descriptive statistics in SPSS when um, we'll be doing some more in class, but those are just kind of the basics.